start outside. A reminder, next week is an off week, so there will not be a Monday press conference. We'll get any other information to you later about any other media availabilities. And a reminder, no live streaming, please. Thanks, Claude. Um, well, we move on to LSU. We're going to a, a extremely tough environment to play in, one that I both experienced as a player and uh, a lot of times as a coach. Um, got an incredible environment. Their fan base is really second to none in their, uh, their atmosphere they create from the time you pull in on the buses to play in the stadium. It's, it's an awesome opportunity for our team to play on a national stage. Uh, it's, a, it's an opportunity for a lot of our guys to play in a venue that a lot of Georgia players never got a chance to play in and, and some in the future won't get an opportunity to play in. So that part's good. They got a really good football team. Uh, I think Coach Ryan has instilled a lot of toughness in their program. They play extremely physical. The game, uh, you know, Saturday with Florida was extremely physical, a lot of big hits, a lot of contact. Uh, it's just the way the SEC is. And you don't get weeks off in the SEC, and it's an extremely tough place to play. I think you saw that last week with the teams that played on the road in our conference, and uh, we're going on the road this week. So the good thing is we've been on the road twice in, in our conference. Uh, we'll be playing a really, really good football team this week in LSU. To up, update you in, uh, on injuries, I'm sure everybody's going to know about Solomon. Solomon has a, a mild uh, MCL sprain. I think he's going to be able to practice today. Um, so we're hopeful that he gets to play, but I won't really know until I see how he does today. He's been able to run on the treadmill and do some exercise stuff, um, but it was not as significant as we thought at the beginning. Um, that's really it. Devontae Wyatt would be hopefully able to practice today, but I don't know. We'll see. He was able to run over the weekend. So that all opened it up. Kirby, before the season and even since the season started, Coach O has said he wants more spread components to his offense. From what you've seen of them, are they do they have more uh, spread look than they traditionally have? Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to say traditionally because I don't – there was a, a brief, what, two, three years where we didn't play them. I didn't play them here, so I don't really know what they were as much when they had uh, Matt Canada. I didn't get to see a lot of that tape. Um, we've seen some of them getting ready for them, but obviously they're a little bit different now. They have uh, some signs of being the old, really physical LSU come downhill and you right in the mouth. They run power, counter, lead. I mean, they do all the traditional pullback offense. But they also have the spread elements, and I think their quarterback does a tremendous job with that. He's a really good athlete. He runs the ball well. They were able to run quarterback runs with him. Um, you can tell that from his transition from Ohio State, he's been able to run the ball. So they have more spread elements, yes, but they still have the traditional hitch in the mouth offense. Coach, you uh, referenced playing out there in 1998. You had a pretty good individual game. Are you the type of guy, do you remember a lot of uh, your specific games as a good while ago, but what are your memories of, of playing there Absolutely. 20 years ago? Uh, Quincy and Champ both playing well. And, uh, Great atmosphere, incredible atmosphere. Of course, I got to coach there a year, so um, I got to experience that atmosphere there at home, and they got a great fan base. Kirby, how tested do you think uh, your team is, and do you think this game or the stretch of games coming up will show more about you know, how good this team is? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the tests are coming up. We've got some tough games, and we've got a bye week after this one, and we're probably coming at a good time. So we got a football team that's beat up and dinged up, just like every team in the conference is. You don't get through this conference without being a little sore and uh, a little beat up, but I think that uh, our tests are upcoming. I think we play some good football teams starting this week with um, what's an extremely physical, well-coached football team and a tough place to play. Burrow's ability to extend the play, run, uh, I guess, you guys haven't faced an SEC quarterback that necessarily runs like him. They've been more pocket quarterbacks. How do you feel about your all's contain on defense and the ability to contain running quarterback? I think it depends on what calls you're calling, what plays you're calling defensively. I and mean, we certainly have some ways to break the pocket and get guys out of the get guys out of the pocket and make them run. And other guys you want to keep them in the pocket and make them throw the ball from the pocket. But ultimately a lot of that's controlled by how well they ever run the ball, how much are they throwing it, how are they protecting it. They've got a lot of different protections. They've got a lot of different run game. Probably the most run game we've seen when you look at the volume of inside zone, outside zone, counter power, 
They've got it all. Uh, they've got a lot of different runs, uh, toss, so perimeter runs. So they do a good job mixing up the run game. That affects how you're able to play the quarterback. So we'll have to see what all they come with for this game. Most to follow up on this. Y'all haven't had anything. Um, starting with LSU this week, I mean, how hard is it to prepare for that week after week after week? But maybe you're dealing with injuries, as you said, or things that just come in the way of playing the game. You're saying how hard is it to prepare for LSU with the. Uh, um, yeah, I'm saying it in terms of how how tough this next stretch of games is. How hard is it to to prepare week after week, no, you don't have a uh, whole week off against that. If, if that makes sense. I, I just don't. I, I don't look at it like you guys do. Everybody's talking about this stretch, and I'm looking at it as we played some good football teams. What I think are good football teams. I think anytime you go on the road in the SEC, it's an adventure, a tough environment. Um, we're gonna play good teams coming up. Absolutely, it's 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 tough everywhere in the SEC. Go talk to Tennessee and ask them the road they're dealing with. Go talk to LSU. They just played Florida. I mean, there's no there's no time to cry about it. Nobody wants to hear that. I mean, you got to get ready to go play, and that's why you come to the SEC is you want to run the gauntlet of challenging teams, unbelievable atmospheres on the road, and that's what the SEC football is about. So our team's got to prepare for that. As far as the dead on white goes, the linebacker for LSU, just the challenge that it's going to present to, to kind of keep an eye. I know where this guy is at all times because he's one of those players obviously all over the field. Yeah, he's an incredible player. I mean, you know, my first experience was recruiting him as a running back and as a linebacker when I was at the University of Alabama. We knew how special he was then. And then he flashed several times. I can remember watching the Mississippi State tape last year as we prepared for them. You know, I told Roquan, I said, this guy is – probably 10 pounds heavier than you, but just as fast. And uh, he's an elite player, very good player. Uh, arguably one of the best in the conference at all positions. And I don't think people know how dynamic this guy really is, but I think people will find out on Sunday real soon. In terms of running the ball, you know, is LSU one of the most physical teams you've seen this season? How do you feel your front seven is prepared to, to take them on challenges on the Saturday? Uh, they better knuckle up because it's going to be physical, tough, hard nosed football team. They have a big offensive line. They've got big fullbacks. They've got big tight ends. They've got big backs. They've got big people. And that's the way LSU is built. Um, they're a physical, tough. I mean, they're, they're across the board now. When you look at their wideouts, their wideouts are huge. They've got big, uh, athletic wideouts. They've always been that way. I mean, that's, that's the tradition at LSU to have. Really good wideouts and be physical and tough, and that's really who they are. So, as far as the questions that our defensive line or our defense have, they'll be answered this week for sure when we go out there to play these guys. Kirby, what, what are your memories of uh, being assistant coach at LSU in 2004? You came from being a grad assistant at Florida State, um, and the dynamics of that coaching staff and, and your growth as a coach that year. An incredible place to, to, to coach and recruit. I can remember going to my areas within the state and uh, very well received. You're really the only <coughs> major university there in the state within the SEC. So when you go out recruiting, it's not really recruiting as much as it is figuring out who the best players are and go get them. Um, the atmosphere, like I talked about, I think all their sports teams are incredible. And Baton Rouge was a great place uh, at the time when I was living there. It was a great place to be and enjoyed it a lot. Got really good memories of a great staff and. Being a young coach on that staff was uh, very um, influential on me to get to be around guys like Jimbo, and Will, and obviously Coach Saban and Derek, and there was a lot of good coaches on that staff. So uh, it was a it was a good experience for me. Um, kind of adding on to that, what, what are some of the extra emotions that come down the sidelines when you're coaching against a team that you previously coached for? I wouldn't say that there's extra emotion about it. I mean, the emotions come from you want your team to play as, as well as they can. For us, it's a game, and regardless of who it's against, that, that never factors in. Uh, for me, it doesn't. I'm personally trying to get our team ready to play. None of these kids care that I coach there. It has no effect on them. So I don't think that has a bearing on the game. 
Uh, last year, you know, obviously the fan base showed up in Notre Dame and where When you play at some place like, you know, as wild as LSU, how important is that for you know, them to show up and try to level out the atmosphere a little more? Yeah, I don't know if level out is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 they're not going to be giving away home tickets, I can promise you that. Uh, so, our fan base travels, they've been uh, very passionate. I'm sure we'll have a lot of fans there that that may not have tickets that are trying to go, and I think that, that shows the passion and energy we have in, within our fan base, and that's incredible. Uh, but when you line up out there between the lines, at the end of the day, it's 11 on 11, and that's what we got to keep it about. Um, they've got tremendous fans. It's one of the loudest places in the country to play, but I don't think our fans will be able to help us when we get inside those lines. Coach, you've... Uh... You've been, uh, I guess I don't care if it's the right word, but using Justin Fields on the road environments, he's been a little bit more limited in snaps. Is that just by circumstance, or has that been mindful of the road environments like you just mentioned, the noise at LSU? No, I, I don't think that has anything to do with it. I, Justin handles the, the offense and the communication really well. I, don't, I think it's been more the fact that it's been the last two weeks we've been home. So it's more recent memory than anything else. He's the right guy to play. And he's the right guy to get in there in situations and do things. And he continues to grow as a player. He gives us an element that we don't have. And uh, certainly done a good job with the snaps he's got. Kirby, I know you addressed the tight ends after the game the other day. But when you have games where tight ends catch a whole bunch of balls and then they games where they don't, yet you have a ton of total offense either way, is that strictly what the defense – is giving you? I mean, is that entirely what that's kind of based upon? Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's based on protection. Because when the tight ends are out in the passing game, they're not in the protection. And uh, a lot of it has to do with our ability to protect the passer, our ability to run the ball and play action. A lot of the catches the tight ends get to come off play action. There's a lot of factors that go into that that I don't think, you know, some people acknowledge. They think it's just about throwing the ball to the tight ends. There's a lot more to it than that. What have you guys seen on film from Greedy Williams that makes him such a talented player? And are there any similarities maybe between him and DeAndre that can help your receivers prepare for him? Well, he's really a talented player. He's long. He's uh, athletic. He's able to twist and contort, play the ball in the air really well. I'd say there probably are some similarities between him and uh, our guys and, and D-Bake. Um, he's been a really good player already and uh, done a great job for them. You know, he kind of takes care of one side of the ball and shuts down a wide out each game and talented guy. They, they traditionally had really good secondary players. Other questions? One more. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just real, uh, real quick, Coach. Um, talking about Justin real quick, the last couple games he's taken a couple shots. Okay, and you've gotten with him on getting down. You know, just that young kind of thinks he can do it all kind of going down. Well, I mean, if you look closely, so has Jake. Jake took some shots in the last game. They both did. So, number one, you got to protect better. But they also both have to know when they're in vulnerable positions, meaning when they're getting pressured and they're not protected, they got to be ready to get rid of the ball. So, that goes on both kids to try not to take the shots. And then, ultimately, in this game, sometimes you're protected and you still get a shot because you don't. Uh, the guy that win, you know, the offense lined up to win for you in front of you. But as far as Justin, I thought he did a good job in the last game. That was something that. Um, he really did on his own, made a decision to slide. And he, he made a good run, it's a good decision, so it shows that he's learning and maturing when it comes to that. And we still want him to be a weapon for us, and he can do that when he runs, but he's got to protect himself as well, which he's done a good job with. Thanks. A couple more questions, anybody? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>